My name is Matt Bennett. I own and operate Flygeek Custom Flies here in Austin, Texas. Uh, I've been living here about 10 years now. I've been fly fishing and tying for about the same amount of time. Today we're going to tie one of my most versatile patterns for fishing, uh, which is the carpet bomb. Uh, I came up with this fly just to be something that landed softly on the water that I could target carp with here, but it's proven very successful on bass and sunfish. It's a really easy to tie fly. Uh, you can match pretty much any kind of local forage uh, by changing the color. Uh, I usually tie it to match my local uh, substrate on the bottom, so lots of olives and browns. And try some of these out and uh, hopefully you have some success on the carp because uh, they can be pretty tough to catch. All right, so we're gonna do the carpet bomb in an olive brown color. Uh, you can tie this on several different kinds of hooks, but for carp, I prefer something that is pretty stout. Uh, so this is uh, an Arex HR430. It's their tube stinger hook. Um, it's nice and stout, but still pretty small. Uh, the thread I'm going to use on this fly is a Vivas power thread and a 140 um, and I choose chartreuse for a reason. Most of the time I'm going to be uh, sight fishing for these fish and that little chartreuse nose on the fly really helps me to be able to pick it out up against the bottom where I'm fishing it. So we're going to start and lay a thread base here and just make a little bump for the eyes which are, these are a large bead chain in a black color. And I'm gonna do about 15 wraps one way. Twist to make it uh, perpendicular to the hook shank. And then 15 wraps that other way. And then just a few figure eight wraps to secure those eyes on there. Uh, for the tail in this fly, we're going to use a blood quill marabou in a olive brown color. Uh, and you want your tail to be about as long as your hook shank here, but your tail is actually going to start down the bend of the hook a bit. So I measure it out, find where I'm going to tie it in and just kind of pinch it there. And then I'll just wrap a couple times to secure it. Go ahead and get rid of this tag end. And then just go ahead and kind of wrap it down the hook shank of the fly. For the back legs on this fly, we're going to use, uh, this is a grizzly barred pumpkin, a root beer color of uh, rubber legs. You're just going to break one of those off, kind of divide it in half like so, and then cut that piece right there. I'm going to tie this in on the near shank of the hook at about the halfway point. Give it a couple wraps to secure and then pull this piece over the hook shank and hold it on the other side with kind of your, uh, uh, your pointer and your middle finger and then wrap back over. And that just secures that piece to the other side of the hook. And then I'll kind of even these out and cut them to be maybe just a little bit longer than the tail of the fly. Now for this fly, I actually make a dubbing loop uh, by splitting my thread. This is a, a Vivas thread splitter. It's a little tool. It's got a little slot there. And when you press down on it, you have a little needle that pops out. So you can split your thread with a regular bodkin too, but this just makes it pretty easy. You just split a little bit of thread out. And then this is Pat Cohen's carp dub which is kind of a synthetic dubbing mix with a bunch of rubber legs built in. I really like this stuff. This is the olive, uh, the olive bar color. So we're gonna take a clump of that, stick it in our split thread and kind of work that through there. And we're gonna take it and just spin our bobbin and let that get nice and kind of spun in there. It doesn't have to be real tight and you just want to make sure that your legs aren't getting caught up in there as well. So once you have a cord of this stuff, you're going to kind of wrap up and then down the hook and stop right behind the eyes, just like that. And that gives you kind of that buggy looking body with a lot of other legs coming out of there. I'm going to take another pair of these same legs that we use in the back 
just going to kind of again cut that in half just like we did. Set it right on top of the eyes. Tie it in on one side and again stretch this other piece to the other side of the hook. To keep these kind of swept back I just take a little pinch of this carp dub again and instead of making a loop I'll just dub it on to the thread. Kind of wrap that backwards and then just cut these legs to be fairly even. We're going to move our thread in front of the eyes now. I'm going to take another pretty good marabou plume feather here, just like we did for the back. Make sure those tips line up. And I'm actually going to set this. This is going to be the wing of the fly. It helps invert it in the water. I'm going to set it right on top of the hook shank here, right at or right behind the eye of the hook to where it extends back and covers maybe a quarter of the tail. And go ahead and tie that in. To help kind of cut this piece off in the front pretty easily, I'm gonna pull it back and wrap a few times in front of it to kind of kick this piece up. And just get down there as close as you can with your scissors to cut that last little piece off of there. Uh, the last step on this fly, I actually take more of this carp dub and just get a few pieces with some rubber legs kind of in it like that. And I kind of straighten it into a cord, kind of set it right on top of that wing there at about the midpoint and wrap it in. And I take this front facing piece and pull it back and then just go ahead and secure it and build you a little bit of a head right over that. That just creates some more movement in the water, traps a little bit more air. And we're gonna go ahead and whip finish this now. Cut out any little uh, straggler marabou pieces. And then just add, to secure this fly, add some of this UV fly finish. I go through, turn it over, and coat pretty much any kind of thread, exposed thread there, and then just hit it with the light to secure that down. And then that is the finished olive brown carpet. Bottom.